age 136. His eyes were closed tight, and his hands, crossed over his stomach, were thin and delicate, no longer scratchy. I remembered as always before how I had run and jumped upon him just anywhere. And now I knew he would no longer be able to support my weight. I looked around at my parents and was surprised to see my father and mother and how they also looked old and frail. My father, his own hair very gray, leaned over the quietly sleeping old man who, incidentally, smelled still of wine and tobacco and said, as he'd always done, as he'd done many times before, to hell with dying, man. My daughter is home to see Mr. Sweet. My brother, my brother was not able to come as he was in the war in Asia. I bent down and gently stroked the closed eyes, which gradually began to open. The lips, the closed, wine-stained lips twitched a little. And opened and open and open into a warm, slightly embarrassed smile. Mr. Sweet could see me and recognized me, and his eyes looked spry and twinkly for a moment. I put my head down on the pillow next to his, and we just looked at each other for a long time. Then he started to trace my peculiar hairline with a smooth, thin finger. I closed my eyes as his finger reached above my ear. He always rejoiced at the dirt in my ears as I was little, and his hand stayed around my cheek. When I opened my eyes, I was sure that I had reached him. His were closed. Even at 24, how, even at 24, how could I believe that I had failed? Could Mr. Sweet really be gone? He had never gone before. But as I looked up and saw my parents, they were holding back tears. They had loved him dearly. He was like a piece of rare and expensive china, which had been saved from breaking so many times. Which, final, which had finally, which, and which finally fell.